Today we are learning about the artboards in Photoshop. This is the third and last part of the artboard series. The links of the other two parts are in the description and in the info above. First we will click this cogwheel and then try to see what happens if we uncheck this auto nest layers option. We'll work with this red circle which is already nested inside the first artboard. You may try to break the nest and free the red object from the grip of the first artboard by dragging it outside. The best it will do is become invisible as it has gone beyond the visible range of the artboard. But the object is still nested inside the artboard. To totally break the nest and detach the object from the first artboard, we'll have to drag the object out here. So if I check the visibility of the first artboard off, the red circle is still visible. And if I drag the object towards the artboard, it will not show up in the artboard because it's no longer a part of the artboard. Rather, the object is hidden by the first artboard as the first artboard is above the object here. To nest the object back to the first artboard, you'll have to drag the object here in the layers panel. But there is a shortcut to do away with the hassle of tracking the object in and out in the layers panel to nest and break the nest with the artboard. Activate the artboard tool by clicking on the edge of the artboard and then head on to this cogwheel icon and then check auto nest layers option. Now if you drag the object outside the artboard, it will break the nest. And if you bring it back again, it will nest the object to the first artboard again. There is a difference between artboards and canvas. Think of artboards as windows and canvas as the sky. Just as you have a glimpse of the sky through the windows, you get a view of the canvas through the different artboards. And just like you can have many windows but just one sky, the same way you can have many artboards but just one canvas. Here you can see that the size of the window or the artboard is 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. But the canvas is much bigger than this. It is 1728 pixels by 1722 pixels. So if you drag the artboard enough on all sides, it will eventually reach the edges of the canvas. It's funny that the window is now bigger than the sky. Or in other words, the artboard is bigger than the canvas. However, if you want to override the absolute value of the canvas and always want to fill up the artboard no matter what the size of the canvas is, you check Auto Size Canvas. This will stretch the canvas to fill up the artboard. So now, if you make the artboard even bigger, it will always show the canvas. Also with this auto size canvas unchecked, if you try to create new artboards, it will only show the extent of the canvas which is available. You can also try to drag and arrange the artboards to see where the canvas is showing. At this point if I check auto size canvas, it will fill up all the artboards. You can drag the artboards anywhere but the canvas will always be there. To export the contents of the artboard in separate images, you go to file, export then export as. This dialog box will pop up and will show the contents of the artboard separately. This has all the major settings which we don't need to worry about right now. We just click export all and then select a destination and a name and save it. You can see that the artboard contains are saved as two separate PNG files. You can also export and save individual artboard contains by right clicking on the artboard, then export as. 
It pops up the same dialog box but instead of showing all the contents of all the artboards, it's just showing the content of the selected artboard. We can now click export all and then save the file. Here is the single artboard that we exported. This concludes the third and last part of the artboard 